Lesson number 22, Adjustments. Hello guys, kumusta mga kaibigan? In this lesson, we are going to learn What do we need to adjust? Why do we need to adjust some accounts? What are the steps in adjusting the accounts? After preparing the trial balance, the next step is preparing the adjustments. What do we need to adjust? We need to adjust the balances of some accounts at the end of the month. Why do we need to adjust some accounts? First reason is some income are only recorded at the end of the month. Second, some expenses are only recorded at the end of the month. Third, a collection made in advance from a customer will be recorded as income when the service or product has already been delivered. Next, a payment made in advance by the business will be recorded as expense when used or consumed. Lastly, the depreciation of equipment, machines, furniture, and other properties that depreciate should be recorded at the end of the month. Let us discuss the first reason. Some income are only recorded at the end of the month. Please take note. The examples that we are going to discuss are not related to Pamin Tuan Consulting Services or to any of our previous exercises. We're just going to discuss them so that you can better understand the need to adjust some accounts of the business at the end of the month. So this is a, an example. A business maintains a savings account in a bank amounting to 200,000 pesos. The deposit earns 1% interest every month to be credited to the account the following month. The interest earned by the business will only be recorded at the end of the month. So the business has a deposit, it's a savings deposit. If you have a savings deposit, you will earn interest. Interest is an income. Do you still remember our discussion regarding accrual accounting? Income is recognized when earned regardless of when the cash is received by the business. So at the end of the month, the, in, the, the business had already earned interest from its savings deposit. So how are we going to record the transaction? The journal entry at the end of the month will look like this. Debit, interest receivable for 2,000 pesos because the interest will be credited to, to the account of the business next month. So as far as the current month is concerned, it's still a receivable, debit interest receivable 2,000. Then credit interest income 2,000 pesos. Again, please remember under accrual accounting, income is recorded when earned, regardless of when the cash is received or credited to the, to the account of the business. Second reason, some expenses are only recorded at the end of the month. Example, the business received its electric bill for the month amounting to 5,000 pesos payable next month. Actually, we have a similar transaction for Pamin Tuan Consulting Services, wherein the, only the, the bill was received, but the payment will be made the next month. The utilities expense will only be recorded upon receipt of the electric bill. So we need to make the necessary adjustment. The journal entry at the end of the month will be a debit to utilities expense, 5,000 pesos, and a credit to utilities payable, 5,000 pesos. As I've mentioned, we have a similar transaction just like this in our examples, uh, example transactions for Pamin to one consulting services. Third reason, a collection made in advance from a client will be recorded as income when the service or product has already been delivered. Example, the business received 20,000 pesos advance payment from a client for a consulting service. 
do you know the journal entry for this transaction? We debit cash, then we credit and earned revenue. At the end of the month, the business had already completed 50% of the work. Income is only recorded when the service or product has already been delivered, whether cash is received before or after the delivery. That is why when the, uh, when the business received the advance payment, we had recorded a liability, not an income, but a liability. The journal entry at the end of the month will involve a debit to unearned revenue for 10,000 pesos. This is equivalent to the 50% advance payment, half of the advance payment should be recognized as income already. So we have to reduce the unearned revenue because a portion of the original 20,000 unearned revenue is already earned revenue. So we debit unearned revenue in order to reduce the liability. Then we credit service revenue 10,000 pesos because 50% of the advance payment has already been realized or earned because the service has already been rendered at the end of the month. Next reason, a payment made in advance by the business will be recorded as expense when used or consumed. Example, the business paid the rent for three months in advance, 9,000 pesos. So at, at the end of the month, the rent for one month should be recorded as an expense. This is our prepaid rent. Expense is recorded when an asset or service is consumed. The journal entry at the end of the month will involve a debit to rent expense, 3,000 pesos. This is the consumed part of the prepaid rent. Then a credit to prepaid rent, 3,000 pesos in order to reduce prepaid rent by 3,000, the consumed part of the advance rental payment. Next reason, the depreciation of equipment, machines, furniture, and other properties that depreciate should be recorded at the end of the period. What is depreciation? Depreciation is a way to spread the cost of an asset that depreciates over its useful life. Generally, it is applicable to depreciable property and equipment. When an asset depreciates, it loses its value due to passage of time, usage, or physical deterioration. Depreciation is an expense because it's the consumed uh, or used part of the asset. Example of assets that depreciate, building, equipment, machines, and furniture and fixtures. How do we compute for the depreciation? To compute for the depreciation, we need the following. First, we need the cost. The cost is the amount we paid for the asset. Second, we need the salvage value. It is the estimated amount for which we can sell the asset at the end of its life. Then, we need the useful life. It is the estimated years or months for which we can use the asset. This is the formula to compute for the depreciation. Depreciation equals to the cost minus salvage value divided by its useful life. Cost minus salvage value is also called depreciable cost. Let me give you an example. A business purchased a computer for 55,000 pesos on credit. The equipment has a salvage value of 5,000 pesos at the end of its useful life, five years or 60 months. Depreciation equals the cost, 55,000 pesos, minus the salvage value, 5,000 pesos, divided by the useful life, 60 months. So the depreciation for each month is 833 pesos and 33 centavos.
The journal entry at the end of the month will involve a debit to depreciation expense, 833 pesos and 33 centavos, and a credit to accumulated depreciation, 833 pesos and 33 centavos. In our journal entry, we had credited accumulated depreciation. What is an accumulated depreciation? Is accumulated depreciation an asset? No! It's an account used to show the total depreciation recorded for a given time. It's a contra-asset account. When I say contra-asset, it is always deducted from an asset. Accumulated depreciation is increased by a credit and decreased by a debit. At the end of the month, the computer has a value of 54,166 pesos and 67 centavos. How did we get this amount? Office equipment, the cost is 55,000 pesos, less accumulated depreciation, 833 pesos and 33 centavos. As I've mentioned, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. Office equipment is an asset. We have to deduct the accumulated depreciation because it pertains to the expired portion of the office equipment. So when someone asks you, how much is the book value of the office equipment? The answer is 54,166 pesos and 67 centavos. How about next month? Office equipment, 55,000 pesos, less accumulated depreciation, 1,666 pesos and 66 centavos. So we just have to add another 833 pesos and 33 centavos to the accumulated depreciation because on this date, two months worth of depreciation had already been recorded. So the book value next month would be 53,333 pesos and 34 centavos. Here are some important things that you have to remember regarding adjustments. Adjustments are analyzed, journalized, we call them adjusting entries, posted, and of course, we have to prepare the adjusted trial balance.